good morning let me thank dr biswal and his colleagues for giving me to uh, opportunity to come and talk in this conference so what i am going to talk today is uh, machine learning based approach for deciphering metabolites which mediate interactions between host and the uh, microbiome so so the, so the, what you this is a, what i am trying to say is the microbiome is a term that describes the genome of all microorganism living on and in, in an the, in a host and it affects the many of the host processes as well associated to whole health and disease in many different ways like biosynthesis of vitamins influences immune maturation metabolism of and chain amino acid and the number of uh, genes in the microbiome is several millions this is a recent study which estimated how many genes could there is so in addition to our host genes we should also be bothered about how these genes from the microbiome are affecting the host processes so what i would concentrate specifically in the in this talk is how secondary metabolites with the, which are either derived or originate from the microbiota or the host metabolites which are transformed or genobiotics which are transformed into metabolites how they affect different processes so in this slide shows so a many different metabolites which comes from microbiota associated with stomach intestinal tract skin oral cavity and things so on and so forth so the broadly so all these studies what has been done till now would uh, broadly point out that uh, the this type of host associated this microbiome associated metabolites can be grouped into three different types like the metabolites which are de novo derived the uh, by synthesized by the microbe so these are mostly bacteriocenes or what are called reps secondary metabolites like polyketides non ribosomal peptides and there are another class of metabolites where a host derived metabolites is transformed to a different metabolites by the microbiota or enzyme coming from the microbiome or genobiotic that is a drug or a diet metabolite is transformed so these are few examples uh, of uh, how this sort of a transformation is working like let us say in this uh, mycobacteria called c syndens is contributing a gene or a uh, enzyme which is converting a primary bile acid to secondary bile acid and if there is a secondary bile acid is uh, there so now in the clostridium difficile so this is inhibiting the probably the growth of vegetative growth of this and production of toxins or so if there is a dysbiosis between these two microorganisms so then that leads to a disease situation that is what is shown in this so the key to that is a host is a microbiome derived enzyme which is converting primary bile acid to secondary bile acid same way this is the how a the en enzyme which is coming from e lenta uh, that is again one of the microbe is converting digoxin which is cardiac drug to the inactive form so now if th those microbiota is higher in the patient so then this drug is not working so this is also another example and these are few other examples of let us say they are making a molecule called lactobacillin it is coming from a bacteria which is there in the in our microbiome which is lactobacillus gasseri and what it is inhibiting is the growth of other pathogens like sres and things like that this is another example called lubdenin is coming from staphylococcus lubdenensis and it is pre 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 preventing the growth of staph aureus so what my talk would concentrate is how you can analyze the microbial genomes and understand or have a computational method where you can predict which are these metabolites which are biosynthesized by the genomes of the microbes and that i would primarily concentrate from the three different types the only the ones which are the de novo metabolites that these metabolites are biosynthesized by from the microbes the other two classes i will not talk here so now the information to make any of these micro metabolites secondary metabolites whether it is a polyketide or a non ribosomal peptide or a class of molecules called reps so what reps stand for is ribosomally synthesized post translationally modified peptide so the information is there in the genome in the form of 
key catalytic domains their 3d structure and using that the a series of reactions are catalyzed and finally these metabolites are being made so now if you have the genome sequence the complete genome or a metagenome sequence of the microbiota we can analyze and by a computational tool we can predict what sort of the molecules being made that is what is the purpose of the drug and you may ask has it really been feasible in some place or not so there are many examples here i am giving you an example called informati peptin so the, the reason it was made informati peptin this is a molecule which is the, the discovered using a informatics approach by identifying the genome and predicting a gene cluster and showing that it is making this not particular rep ribosomally associated synthesized post translational modified peptide this is a class of lanthipeptide and this was subsequently confirmed by mass spectroscopy so there are many such studies which shows that by genome mining that means by analyzing the genome you can really predict secondary metabolites and uh, this is and they are the the class of few class of metabolites which you would concentrate here in this talk is a class called polyketides which are made by a class of enzymes called polyketide synthase like erythromycin is an example and here there are many catalytic domains and what this color coding is shown is the way, like atacp these are doing this moiety this aksat krcp this is adding the moiety which is colored in yellow so by a combined assembly line mechanism you are getting all the moieties they are joined and cyclized you are getting erythromycin so there is another class of enzymes called non ribosomal peptide synthase so they are making peptides but they are not made in the ribosome so they are made using a protein templates and there are catalytic domains which are specific for amino acids something will add phenylalanine another enzyme will add aspartame another methyl will add tyrosine so you have a peptide and there is a thioesterase which is going to cyclize it and you are getting this cyclic molecule let us say tyrosidine a so now in the same way there is an another class of molecules which are called ribosomally synthesized post translationally modified peptides so that means this is a small peptide which is synthesized in the ribosome what is shown here in blue and in its genomic neighborhood there are other modifying enzymes and these modifying enzymes modify the peptides in install many different types of cross links so these are mostly bacteriocins glycosins sacripeptide lanthipeptides this is the class of this metabolites so what i am going to tell you today how you can analyze the genome and predict this classes and what is shown here in more detail is the type of cross link these enzymes are putting as you can say what we start from a simple peptide which we can inform from the genome and we have to tell which amino acids are modified and how these are cross links and can you really predict because this can be cross linked in many different ways can you really predict which cross link the nature prefers and uh, this is what and uh, there are many tools which were doing this like uh, anti smas is one tool it can analyze the genome but what it can predict is a linear moiety but how it cyclizes it cannot be predicted so prism is another program which can again predict linear moiety but it enumerates all possible cyclization patterns that means it is going to give you a large number of possible cyclization pattern it is not going to tell you which type of cyclization is preferred and th this is another program called sbspks structure based analysis of polyketide synthase and non ribosomal peptide synthase this is a program which has been developed in our group this can or this could also earlier predict only linear precursor so now the question is how do you go from linear precursor of the moiety which you are deriving from a bioinformatics analysis to predict the correct cyclization pattern so this is where the machine learning is coming to help us and you must have heard recently the news how machine learning has successful in predicting the protein structure during the casp context and what is shown here is the output of a program or the result of the program called alpha fold 2 what everybody is excited that it is able to predict protein structure as good as experiments these are the superposition of the predicted this and before this people had used machine learning to tell to tell how the to address questions in chemistry how you are able to tell the synthetic root of a molecule which are the reaction steps one should how do you synthesize this molecule so this is what chemists do so a ai program which is trained on various reaction mechanism is able to predict it so they the the 
potential machine learning application for bioinformatics and chemoinformatics if you join them together you are in a position to address the questions which i highlighted so let us say this is shown here the precursor molecule before cyclization of to generate erythromycin so using a bioinformatics approach by taking which catalytic domains are there which mitochondria will be joined together you could predict a linear structure and this is indeed possible and we have many publications from our group and other groups which has shown this but now the what i would explain you today how do you predict if you theoretically cyclize this carbonyl oxygen can either cyclize with any of the hydroxyl group you will generate all these six possible structures but you have to tell which of this six structure is the correct structure that means this one is the correct cyclization these are all incorrect cyclization pattern so if you think in terms of machine learning language this use this correct structure you can say this is the positive data the incorrect structure is the negative data so if you use this data to train a machine learning classifier you can indeed predict this cyclization pattern so then once you do this like so you need of course a as an example the any many known cyclization pattern that is going to be your training data you are training your algorithm on this and then you are evaluating how good is the algorithm and this and what this training process does is the data might be originally very complex that that means positive and negative data is mixed up it is thinking of a mathematical transformation which is able to separate the positive data and the negative data so that then it becomes easy to distinguish and once you do that and how good is your prediction is decided based on this graph what is called a roc curve it plots at a false positive rate on one axis and true positive rate on other axis if your prediction is 100% perfect you will get a rectangle and the area on that means at a zero false positive 100% true positive so that that is going to give you area of 1 but any other prediction could be and if you do a random prediction it you will be getting along the diagonal that means auc value will be area under the curve will be 0.5 so anything between 0.5 and 1 is a good prediction so the more convex is the curve that is better that means at a less false positive you are getting more true positive so but to do this convert this chemical structures into a machine readable form where machine learning can work you need to do what is called a encoding in terms of a feature vector so so in this in the drug industry there are many type of chemical fingerprinting is been used so what we used what is called a morgan circular fingerprint so the what it is keeping track is which atoms are there how they are bonded is it a double bond or single bond and things like that using this criteria it is converting a chemical structure into a vector string of zeros and ones so these zeros and ones are essentially representing all these chemical structures once you do this feature encoding you can use any machine learning classifier so for the because the time is limited so i would just tell we have used one type of classifier which are called random forest classifiers and the way this feature encoding is done is you center on every atom you draw a circle of different radius and try to check which atoms are present is it how it is bonded and the, and as you keep moving this atoms over the entire molecule you generate the entire fingerprint so once you do that so we did this exercise and we used a data set of polyketides and non ribosomal peptides for which we knew the correct structure and the correct cyclization pattern and as in any machine learning this data set will be divided into positive and negative data set and trend and this is the performance of the machine learning classifier that means if you look at this curve at a 20% false positive you are going to do a true positive prediction of 80% and so under different condition the performance is reducing i will not go into the details but if you see the sensitivity specificity precision and all these statistical parameters the all these data goes on to show that we are able to predict the cyclization pattern with a reasonable accuracy so what this table shows is if somebody has the correct linear structure you are able to predict the cyclization pattern with 95% accuracy whereas if you have a linear structure generated by a software like antismas or sbspks or prism the predicted structure the is the performance is reducing and that is what uh, has uh, happened and uh, the, the, so once we did that so this is what i told as of now is summarized here so you started from the genome 
you predicted what are the gene clusters present in gene clusters what are the catalytic domains and the within the then from that you predicted the linear structure and now you used machine learning at this step to go from the linear structure to the cyclic structure and this work now uh, that is what i just told you this has been recently published from our group in bioinformatics so, and what it is telling you is starting from a linear structure uh, the, from a genome you can tell how many gene clusters are there for each gene cluster you can predict which are the secondary structures of the metabolites and uh, of course the predict up to the reasonable uh, the accuracy which i showed before and uh, now these are for polyketides and non ribosomal peptides in the same way if i want to apply this problem called rips as i told you rips are ribosomal synthesized post translation modified so here you have to predict this this lanthionin bridges that means cross links between different residue theoretically if you generate cross links these are the all possible cross links but the true cross links are the ones in blue and the red ones are the false or wrong cross links so again use the same trick try to use the blue ones from the known data as the positive data and the red ones which you will generate theoretically as the negative data train a machine learning classifier then you are in a position to predict this also and this also we have shown in our earlier work that you are able to predict the cyclization patterns in rips and the overall method the flow chart is given in this uh, the work i will skip this and what i would try to do is now if we apply this to a data set of 15 20 genomes so are the complete genome sequences which has come from gut microbiome so in each of them we could find the different classes of number of lanthipeptides glycosins lasopeptides like how many different types of rips are there for some of these rips we could predict the cross linked chemical structure and we can compare with the known structure this is a molecule which cross linked structure we predicted by using our program rip minor this is a molecule which is similar to this a known molecule called nisin u up to 99% and this chemical structure similarity is measured using a thing called what is called tanimato coefficient so now the same approach like now this rip minor if you give a genome like we tested another example there was a paper published uh, where it said a antibiotic which is coming from a microbiota is the uh, restoring resistance against vancomycin resistant enterococcus it is a blausia producta we took the blausia producta genome and gave it to the rip minor pro program and it predicted this chemical structure and if you compare it with the actual structure which has been experimentally characterized if you find that all the cross links have been correctly predicted except for this threonine which sequence is like where it is the software doesn't understand predict it is to be a dhb which is a modified residue which is actually modified in the experiment structure so it tells you the accuracy to which you can predict this chemical structures so this is where i will stop and the overall conclusion from my talk is a evolutionary analysis of known natural product biosynthetic pathways in combination with protein structure modeling can help in developing predictive rules for correlating sequence of secondary metabolite gene clusters to their chemical structure and there are uh, what i th these are the few things i did not cover in more detail and combining bioinformatics computational chemistry and machine learning approaches can help in discovery of new biosynthetic pathways by genome mining and uh, the this is the these are the people who have contributed to the work and the primary work what i presented is done by priyas and sana amir and these are the other people who work in other groups these are the earlier student who have con contributed to this program and these are my collaborator i will stop here and take questions thank you